Welcome to the online training for the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program, or the IMMP. The IMMP is a program to collect data on monarch butterflies and their habitats across their entire breeding range. The data will be used by a variety of conservation professionals and researchers to advance our understanding of monarchs and their habitats, set conservation objectives, and monitor progress toward them. We're excited to have you join this effort. In this video, you'll learn how to fill out the site description and conservation management history forms. The site description is the only required form for monitoring. This ensures a minimum amount of information is uniformly collected at all sites. It's a way to describe the site type, your monitoring plot location, disturbances, and other significant features of habitat in the plot. The conservation management history form is required for a site where management occurs and records what management has occurred and when. This activity records the plot boundaries. It also coarsely describes certain habitat attributes and records management and land use activities. The site description is conducted every time the site is monitored. The first visit records some extra information and after that, only a portion of the data sheet is filled out. We'll review that here. It's important to fill out the site description every time you monitor the site so you can accurately track changes such as changes in coarse vegetation cover or disturbances such as mowing. Additionally, you can't enter data into the IMMP portal until the site description is entered for that day. Conduct this activity the first time as you set up your plot, walking the perimeter. Also, meander through the plot to better assess the plant cover. You'll use ocular estimates or eyeball the area to estimate the proportion of plot covered by certain plant types. If the site is managed for conservation or agriculture, you should contact the land manager to complete the conservation management history form. The site description form consists of two pages. Here, you record where your plot is, what its shape is, and some basic management and land cover characteristics. If the site is managed for conservation, mark yes here, and then fill out the conservation management history form. We'll walk through the conservation management history form later. It's two pages with some basic options for recording management details. Back to the site description form, you'll fill out this top part every time you visit the site. It's important to record the date you were there, your name, the plot ID, and what land cover or site type that it is. Imagine we're visiting this randomly selected site. We have set up a standard rectangle plot according to the plot setup protocol. We fill out the date and our name. If you're monitoring a random site, it has been assigned a site type. Verify the site type here and correct it if needed. If you're monitoring a self-selected site, just denote what the site type is. Refer to your guidebook for details on what these codes mean. In this example, our site type was an unclassified grassland or UGS. Let's say here, we got to our random site and found out that it's actually a former agricultural field that the owner has enrolled in a conservation program. We marked that the verified site type is now ACL, agricultural conservation land. We use that in our plot ID. Here, our plot ID is ACL 0014550000. Because the site type is ACL, it's in the monarch block 001455, and its random number is 82. See the site selection video for more detail on generating this ID. The next section of the form is only filled out on your first site visit. On subsequent visits, you can skip to page two. Fill out some basic ownership information. Here, our site is private with no public access. Since it's not public land, we don't fill out the next section. The landowner told us that it's enrolled in the agricultural conservation program, so it is managed for conservation. Ask the owner or manager what the conservation goals are and denote that under the project type. Next, denote any conservation programs associated with the site. Next, we record some information about the plot location. First, it's a standard rectangle, so check that box. Now we record the corners. If it's a random site, the first corner is the random point itself. Typically, you'll use a GPS or a transect tape to walk, your, walk to your other corners and record their GPS coordinates. 
You may also use the online mapping tool as shown in this site selection video. Mark the start bearing, which is the direction you head from point one. Then mark the direction that you turn to complete the shape. Here, we turn right. Now in the middle of the first page, record the dominant adjacent land use. Consider only what is in, within 100 meters of the plot. Use the size of your plot for reference. Here, imagine a 100 meter buffer around the plot itself. We see that most of the land within the buffer is still part of the agricultural field. So we mark agricultural conservation land. You may select more than one. Next are two optional fields, slope and aspect. Fill those out if you'd like. Now there are two sections for specific land use types. If you're not in a right of way or ag field, don't fill them out. Let's imagine for a minute that we're at a right of way. <clears throat> Here we have a linear plot along a roadside. We mark that it's a roadside and a small paved road. Now we need to estimate the right of way width. The width if the width changes, take several measurements. The number of measurements you take is up to you. Here, our width changed, so we took several measurements. We record the width at each of those locations and average them. Also, record the width of the frequently mowed vegetation, which is the very short veg right next to the roadside edge. Here, we estimate it's three meters. If you're surveying an agricultural field or edge, fill out the bottom right section with some information about the crop type. Now flip to page two. Record any disturbances you see in the plot at the top of the page. Here, we see that the owner has mowed the thir east third of the plot recently. Mark the mowed box and estimate the percent disturbed to the nearest net 10%. Page two also obtains some basic vegetation characteristics. Consider everything you saw while setting up the plot corners and meandering through it. You may also adjust this after conducting your other activities. Here's what our site looks like. We estimate it's over 50% covered with grasses and about 30% covered with forbs. And mark the corresponding boxes. This is optional, but you may also record common forb species. We also record the shrub and tree cover and opt to record the common woody species that we see. Further down the page, we can optionally choose to record the noxious weeds, and noxious weeds and invasive weeds. This is optional and up to the participant or land manager to determine what they want to track in this category. Here, we see a small amount of Johnson grass, so record it. If there are water features, record those as well. Here, we don't have any within the plot, so we record none and click NA. Estimate how much bare ground is visible when looking down into the ground cover and mark that here. Here we estimate about four to 5% bare ground is exposed, putting us in the one to 10 category. The plant and bare ground cover can exceed a total of 100% because they may occur in layers. Finally, on the bottom of every data sheet, there's a section to record miscellaneous monarchs. Here, an adult flew by while we were setting up our plot and we saw a fifth instar while we were recording our forb cover. So we can record these two incidental occurrences. That completes the site description form, which is required with every site visit. The conservation management form only needs to be filled out annually on sites managed for conservation. Fill out your basic survey information and ask the landowner or land manager to help you fill in the rest of the sheet. Here, the owner told you that she started conservation management in 2012. She intends to continue conservation management. The previous land use was a pasture. Get the most accurate record of management history possible. Here, the landowner did a native seeding in the fall of 2017, was annually removing herbaceous weeds since 2012, and did some additional brush removal in 2020. Finally, if the land was seeded or plugs were planted, get a list of species if possible. It is easiest to enter that data directly into the IMMP data entry portal 
rather than handwriting every species on the sheet and then transferring it to the portal. It will look similar to the sheet in the portal. Here, the landowner planted on November 21, 2017, planted 14 and a half acres and mechanically broadcast the seed. She also gave us her plant list. That's it for the conservation management history. On your next visit, make sure to fill out the site description form. Fill out the top of the first page and all of the second page. Congratulations on completing the site selection online training. You can find all the training materials and data sheets at the website shown here, or may contact Monarch Joint Venture staff with specific questions at the email address below. Thank you and happy monitoring.